Hello! In this section of the tutorial we're going to learn how to use the graphing functions of this calculator uh, but instead of plotting functions, which is what we've what we've done so far, regular, you know, rectangular, well-defined functions, we're going to learn how to plot parametric equations. So it's a fancy sounding name, parametric equations, uh, but it's something that you typically learn in the tail end of an algebra, advanced algebra class. Uh, you use them also sometimes in trigonometry and definitely in calculus you learn about parametric functions. Um, it's not very difficult to understand. Let's dive into it and see how this calculator handles it. Uh, well, first, when you go to the mode menu, you'll see down here that uh, right now we're in function mode. And so that's the regular mode that we use to plot functions. And so if you, if you get out of here and you go into your y equals setup, you'll see your regular equations, you know, you can type in to plot your regular function. So if we go back to the mode menu and change it from function, where we want to go now is parametric, parametric equation. This is to plot polar equations over here. And this is to plot your sequences, which we just did in the last section. So let's go ahead and hit enter to change the calculator mode to parametric. And we'll go ahead and get out of this menu. Okay, now that we've done that, when we go back to the y equals uh, setting, notice that everything looks different. It doesn't look like the previous setup, and that's because we're not in regular function mode, we're in parametric mode. Uh, and you see here that we have x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on, and these define your parametric equations. Now the thing to know about parametric equations, and that you'll learn in your class when you get there, is that basically instead of having y is equal to some function of x, so where x is the independent variable and y is the, the thing you calculate, the dependent variable, um, in parametric equations what you have is x and y are sort of defined what we call parametrically. So there's a parameter which we call t which is almost always you know, denoted to be time where x is a function of time and y is a function of time. So if you, you sort of just need to step back and think about it for a second. In a regular function you plug in values of x and you get values of y and you plot that. In a parametric equation, you actually have two equations for every function you plot. One of these equations is, a is x as a function of time, so maybe you're throwing a baseball. Maybe that, that baseball is an arc as it goes up in the air and down like this. So you can split this motion up into two different kinds of motion. You can split it up into the horizontal motion, which would be x. x is a function of time. How does the ball move only in the x direction? You know, it's obviously a curved path, but you can look at its motion along the x direction, and that would be a function of time. And you'll have some function here, t squared or whatever, but the variable that you type in here is always going to involve time. You're also, at the very same moment, going to have, uh, in parametric terms, a y function that's going to also be a function of time that would describe that vertical motion of the ball as it rises to the top of the arc and as it falls down. Now together, the x motion going horizontally and the y motion that's going up and down, together when you look at those things together, gives you your graph that you, that you have. So the bottom line is for a parametric equation, you need to type in x of t and y of t. And together, those pair of equations is going to define your graph that you're going to be able to look at in the graph menu. Now here in the screen, we have x1, uh, there's plot number two, plot number three. We go down here, we're going to see there's plot number four, plot number five, plot number six. So this calculator can handle six simultaneous parametric equations. So you can type in six of them uh, uh, there and you can plot all six at one time if you want. You could go over here like we did in previous sections and change the uh, type of graph, make it a, a heavy shade or you can you know shade in different ways and do the do the different different ways the dotted lines space a little farther apart etc to make them stand out differently uh, and you can you know highlight the equal signs like we did before and turn the functions on and off so so far it's it's really behaving the same way and you know what once you know once you know how to type in these parametric equations and how to you know get around and see what it's doing then using the calculator is actually done exactly the same way okay so let's pick a function here let's say um, Let's pick a simple one. x as a function of t uh, is going to be t. Now notice we pressed, whoops, let me go over here and press t. Notice that when you press this button, because we're in parametric mode, the t is the value that pops up here. And it's, it's always going to be t when we press this button because we're in this particular mode. And let's go down here and let's also type in t. So what this has done is we've defined a parametric equation, which is x of t and y of t. 
t is now time and it's the independent variable. So you might start at time is equal to zero and with each moment of time that goes past, one second, two seconds, three seconds, you're going to calculate a value of x and a calculate a value of y at time t. And you're, then you'll just simply plot x and y as a point on your graph and then you'll create a pretty picture just like we did for all the other graphs that we've done so far. So when we go over to the graph menu now, we hit this guy and we're going to see that we have a graph that's plotted here and this is this is our um, this is our parametric equation so it draws a nice graph for us and when we trace this graph we're going to see a lot of really interesting things it shows us at the top that x1 of time is equal to t and, and y1 of time as a function of time is also equal to t so as we trace along here at time 0 x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. The reason this is the case is because we said that x is equal to t and y is equal to t. As we increase t time, think about it in terms of seconds, 0. 0.262 seconds, 0. 0.393 seconds, 0. 0.5424 seconds, and so on. As each moment in time goes on, x takes on this value because of this, and y also takes on this value because of this. And so this is the simplest parametric equation you could probably do. It's describing a line just like you could use a function to describe a line it's just that it's neat and interesting and useful to put it in this form because now we have both coordinates as a function of time and a lot of times it's very very good in physics to write things down this way because it it helps us look at the motion so we're going to go up here and I'm going to show you what's going to happen when we get up here in time we're climbing to the edge of our graph and when we get to the end of it here let's see what happens we're going to get right to the end Notice that I can't go any farther. I can only go to 6.283. The reason that's the case is when I go over here to the window menu, you see t is a parameter. That's what we call. That's why it's called a parametric equation. So the minimum time is zero, zero seconds, let's say. And in this window menu, the default value for time, the maximum that it can go for a default is 6.28 seconds. That's just something the calculator has as a, as a default value. You can put a maximum of, let's say, you know, 10 seconds in here, no problem. Hit that T step is is how many you know seconds between points that you pick, you know, as you, as you step through time uh, there, and you can put anything you want there. But just to get a feel for what the graph looks like, this is just fine. Now, when this is done, we go back to the graph menu. We're going to see that this graph continues on because this this is going to allow it to go up to 10 seconds. So if I were to hit trace and keep going, I would, I would see that I would be able to get all the way to 10 seconds uh, there. So that's a, that's a good primer of, um, of parametric equations. You can go back here and you can define you know, a different parametric equation. Maybe um, you might have cosine of t for one value and then let's pick something crazy, t for y. So as, x, as t, time goes on, x is going to take on the value of cosine of that time and y is going to take on the value of time itself. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And by the way, I have no idea what it's going to look like, but look, it looks kind of interesting. It's a little squiggly s like this. And if we hit the trace button, notice that we're, right now when we start the trace, we're still on our line, which is our first parametric equation because of the sub 1 here. If we hit the down arrow, this is going to cycle to x2 of t, which is cosine t and y2 of t which is time. So as I trace through time here, I'm increasing time in terms of seconds and the x value and the y value change. And the, how do they change? x is taking on the value of cosine of this time and y is taking on the value of time itself. And so the calculator at each step in time is just simply calculating these values of x and y and then it's just plotting it on a graph for you. So it's, it's, not, you know, it's not anything special. Now you can go in here to the zoom menu and have access to all of the zoom functions that we've explained in detail in previous sections. You can draw a box to zoom in. You can go into here and hit Z standard and go out and, and have it plot the standard, uh, the standard uh, scale there, plus minus 10 like that. You can go into the zoom menu and you can hit Z box and you can go and draw yourself a nice little box. So let's do that a little bit and just zoom in a little bit on this function. Hit enter to start our box off. We can go over here and we can draw a box around the interesting sections like that. And when we're done, we can hit enter and we'll see the graph has been redrawn and zoomed in. So really, there's no point in talking about all these functions again because you really, we've already talked about them before. 
and uh, it really behaves the same way. Uh, the window menu behaves the same way where you can set the maximum parameter, you can set the step, you can set the scales and all that stuff and, and, and there's a little bit of overlap between what the zoom menu does and what the window menu does. Now I also want to show you that you can instead of looking at this in terms of a graph you can hit second function and go to table just like you can do for any of the other guys. So in this case uh, for x sub 1 remember which is just time when x is x of t is time and y of t is, is also t. As we go up in t, um, x takes on the value of t and y takes on the value of t. Now if I scroll over to x sub 2 and y sub 2, which is right here, then as x increases I'm taking, I think it was the, um, the sine of the, of the number here of time. Let's go back over here and check it out. It's cosine. So it's taking on the cosine of that value, which is cosine of time here, and this guy is just mirroring time itself. So this is a great way to see what the calculator is doing. As time increases, it's calculating a value of x according to whatever I've defined, and as time increases, it's calculating a value of y as time goes on. And the calculator is simply using these points here to plot the graph. So parametric equation it can draw any kind of equation that a regular function can. It's just that some parts of math um, are more easily described in terms of a parametric equation. So that's why we learn them. It's not that they're special or really unique that you know you can that you, you have to use them in only certain cases. It's just that sometimes in physics it's easier and makes more sense to to describe the motion of, of maybe a baseball sometimes in terms of parametric equations and things like that. Now because we can use the table functionality and the graph functionality you can also go in and do what we've done before for functions, which is go to uh, graph time. We can hit graph time where we can look at graph at the same time that we look at the time. So I can see a little thumbnail of the graph and I can also see the time. So if I hit second function table, now this part's active and I can go over here and I can look at the x and y values of everything and basically get a feel for what the function is doing while I look at a picture of the function. And that's, that's kind of neat. Let me go back and hit it into full screen mode and I'll show you one more thing. And that is, let me get out of here, and that is if you go over to table set, this is the table setup. We're telling uh, the table to start at zero and we're telling the time to increment by one. And here everything's automatically done so the table's generated automatically. But just like we've done in previous sections, if you go for, to ask for the independent variable which is time, and go back to table, then now you have a blank table. So now you can say, okay, what's happening at t is equal to 1? So x and y of sub 1 of t is equal to 1 because those are equal to t. But if we scroll over and look at x sub 2 and y sub 2, we'll see that here it's taken the cosine of this um, in radians, and this guy is just mirror imaging it because that's how we defined it. Now we can go back over here and we can put anything we want in here and this is one thing that it's useful for when we can define a parametric equation and use the table function to be able to calculate values. What about um, you know time is equal to 5? Or what about time is equal to 88? You know we can kind of create our own table which is uh, very useful in certain circumstances and anytime you fill the table out you can go off and look at as many functions as you have here. So as many functions as you have defined here you can go over in the table mode and, and look at those. So you see here, when we're looking at this parametric equation, we can go over and trace the values of the graph. That's not a problem. But if you want an exact value, uh, you can do exactly what we did for the function and go into calculate value and hit this guy. And it's going to ask you for a value of time and you can put something exact in. And here it will evaluate the function for you exactly uh, there. Now you can also create a table to do exactly the same thing. So it really just depends on what you prefer to do. But one thing I do want to show you is if you go into the calc menu and enter a number for time that's too big, so let's say you know 85, time is equal to 85, you're going to get an error. And the reason you're going to get an error is because if you go into the window here, you'll see that you've defined t max to be this number here. So you know you've basically told the calculator to stop calculating after values of time equal to this number. So sort of the rule of thumb is you need to make sure that anything you request in the calc menu is whatever you've inside of whatever you've defined here. So if you go back to calc, uh, you can put any value of time in here you want as long as it's less than six point, you know, whatever. And you'll see that it, it returns everything properly at that point. 
The other thing you can do uh, for a better example of this, let's get rid of, of this guy. Let's turn this first parametric equation off and let's only go and graph the second one. So now we only have the one graph. Let's go into the calc menu and notice that we have some derivatives we can take, which are basically looking at the rate of change of y uh, with respect to x. So that's a derivative of y with respect to x. And here is the derivative of y with respect to t. And here's the derivative of x with respect to t. So it's a way to look at how the function is changing. The, this guy is just looking at how the y, you know, the y variable changes as you look at compared to time. This guy is looking how x how, how x changes as a, as a function of time. So if you think back to that motion, this guy is looking how does that motion change as a function of time? How does that position change as a function of time? This guy is looking only in the y direction and this guy is sort of like the composite. How does y change when you, can, when you look compared to x? So they function just like you would think. You hit this guy and uh, you go and you put a value. Uh, you, you basically use it to pick a value uh, on your graph. So you're traced to a point. You want to look at the derivative there and hit enter and it's going to tell you dy dx is equal to this number. It's negative because the slope of the line tangent at this point is sloping in this direction. And if you go back to the calc menu and look at dy dt, how does y change as a function of time and pick you know, some value? Then you'll hit enter and the calculator is going to tell you that at that point dy dt is equal to uh, that number. How does the y component only um, change as a function of time? And so you can do exactly the same thing with x dx dt. So you hit that guy, uh, you go back to some point that you want to calculate the derivative at and hit it and you'll get an answer there as well. So it's basically calculating those numeric derivatives at whatever point there. It's pretty rare that you would use that, but you, you never know, you might. So basically this is a great introduction to uh, parametric equations. It's not something you use every day in algebra or in really in any level of math, but when you get into the point where you need to develop your equation in terms of a parametric equation, it's really handy for you to uh, know how to use your calculator feature. So the bottom line is you need to put the calculator in parametric mode when you set up your equations, you have six parametric equations, one through six that you can define and plot. You need to write your functions in terms of time, and these are going to be x is a function of time and y is a function of time. You can hit the graph button and look at them just like you normally do. You can trace them just like you normally do. You can look at the table of values, time as a function of uh, as the independent variable and then the other guys will be calculated. You can set your user defined table like we've done here or you can have the table automatically generated by going into table set and changing everything back to auto, right? Just like we've done in the past. So we can go back to table and see everything's automatically generated. Uh, you can go to split screen modes just like you can for functions. And in general, once you know how to graph in this calculator, then doing a parametric graph is really not that hard. And we're going to see in the next section when we look at polar graphing that that's not very hard either. So once you know how to get around the menu interface of this calculator. I'm Jason. I hope you've learned something in this section. Uh, keep it up. Play around with it. Parametric equations can be fun uh, and uh, certainly can make it a lot easier once you know how to use the features of this calculator.